Hello everybody, it's nice to be with you today. My name's Sonia Bennett. I'm a glaucoma specialist based in Auckland. Um, I really enjoy participating in these Glaucoma New Zealand uh, patient symposiums. This is our second one, um, and it's the first time it's been virtual. So wherever you are, whenever it is that you're watching this, I hope that you enjoy it and that you um, gain some extra information to help you along in your glaucoma journey. I'm going to be talking you, with you today about eye drops, and eye drops are a very common form of treatment um, in glaucoma management. There are many different types of drops that we have available, and different people will be on different types of medication. Some are specifically for certain types of glaucoma, but the majority of drops are for all types of glaucoma. We also, um, at different times, use lasers. Lasers can be helpful to treat uh, the eyes in ways that drops can't, and sometimes we'll laser to open the drainage angle, and sometimes we'll laser to help to bring the pressure in the eye down in a similar way to um, the way that eye drops work. We also have surgery as another treatment option, and surgery we usually go for when either the eye drops or the laser doesn't work, or in some patients who are diagnosed with very um, advanced glaucoma right from the beginning. My talk today is mostly going to talk about eye drops, why we use them, and also some of the things that you might expect if you use eye drops. So let's talk about plumbing in the eye. And for us as glaucoma specialists, in many ways we are glorified medical plumbers. What we're trying to do is help the eye with glaucoma treatment, help the eye to uh, regulate its pressure better, which is by managing the fluid in the front of the eye. So glaucoma in a lot of cases occurs because the pressure is high, or the pressure is too high for your eye to cope with. And sometimes that can mean that your pressure might still be in the normal range. The treatment, regardless of whether the pressure is really high or within the normal range, is still to lower the pressure. And so there are two ways that we think about that in terms of treatment. One of them is to reduce the fluid production. And a lot of the drops help to reduce the amount of fluid that's produced and we also have some tablets that can uh, fulfill this job as well. The other way that we can help the um, fluid in the eye is by improving the drainage and some of the drops and indeed the laser treatment, uh, selective laser trabeculoplasty, helps to improve the fluid drainage. Some of the drops work on both aspects, which is really useful. So this is a little cartoon showing some of the drops that decrease fluid production. Ulfagan, or it's now known as the um, generic name uh, bromonidine, helps decrease fluid production as does azopt and a lot of the beta blockers like Timolol, and some of the combination drops like Combigan and Cosopt. The drops that help to improve the drainage of fluid are mostly the prostaglandins, which are uh, latanoprost, used to be called Zalatan, Travaprost, and Bimatoprost, which used to be called Lumigan. And with any of these eye drops, there are always potential side effects. So, well, can side effects be that bad? It's just a small little drop that you put on the eye. You would be amazed at the effects that can occur all over the body from putting an eye drop on the eye. And that's because a certain amount of the drug is absorbed through the front wall of the eye, the cornea, and then reaches the inside of the eye, which is the target place for its effect. But a certain amount of it also 
gets absorbed into the blood vessels on the surface of the eye, on the inside of the eyelids. And furthermore, some of the eye drop liquid can go through the um, tear drainage pathway and end up on the top of the nose. Inside the nose, it's very well supplied with blood vessels and those blood vessels absorb the medication uh, with great ease and then it gets circulated around the body. So in actual fact, some of the eye drops that we prescribe our patients that you might be taking can cause the heart rate to slow, they can cause a reduction in blood pressure, exercise intolerance, irritated red eyes, the fat in the eye socket can, can atrophy, um, you can develop blepharitis, which is a very uncomfortable condition where the eyelids become red around the edges. The iris can change colour, you can have vivid dreams, impotence, dry mouth, headaches, and so the list goes on. A lot of these are completely reversible when we stop the drops. So what's really important to know is that if you feel different or if something is troubling you, anything off that list or something different, please tell your ophthalmologist about it as soon as you can. If you can't get hold of your ophthalmologist, please tell your GP. Sometimes we have patients end up in hospital with fainting episodes because they're on a beta blocker medication which is slowing their heart rate and lowering their blood pressure. And they can end up having all sorts of cardiac interventions without anybody necessarily realising that it's the eye drop that's causing this to happen. If their side effects are bad, then stop the drops immediately and ask your ophthalmologist for an alternative. Please don't wait till the next appointment to report this to your ophthalmologist. It's really important to let them know. And we always encourage our patients to communicate with us and let us know if there are problems with the eye drops. And it's especially important within the first couple of months of starting the eye drops. It's also very important that you use your eye drops every day. All the eye drops currently available need to be administered at least once a day, sometimes two to three times per day. So if you think that you're not able to do this on a regular basis, then your ophthalmologist can provide training. There is a really helpful uh, uh, brochure which is available on the Glaucoma New Zealand website and your ophthalmologist may be able to um, give you this brochure in the clinic. Um, have a little look at the Glaucoma New Zealand website because it tells you about the technique for getting eye drops in. If you're still struggling and can't get them in regularly, this regularly despite having help, then please tell your ophthalmologist. Please don't pretend that they're going in, otherwise we don't know, as your doctor, if the drop's being effective when we think you're having it. In this case, we can either perform laser uh, treatment or perform surgery to help the pressure come down. It's just really important to let your ophthalmologist know. There is a particular issue in glaucoma patients on drops that is very, very common, and it's where the eye drops can cause dryness on the surface of the eyes. Sometimes it feels like the surface of our eyes <coughs> is a scorched plane, just a little bit like this, this image here. And it would be one of the most common things that I hear in my day-to-day -day glaucoma practice that patients do struggle or have symptoms of dry eye. Probably up to 90% of patients, glaucoma patients on eye drops, do have problems with dry eye. So we can help you, your ophthalmologist can help you to minimise the number of drop bottles that you use every day. As we talked about earlier, some of the some of the um, drops come in single uh, drugs per bottle and others come in um, two drops per bottle. Now, it actually can be quite helpful to use a combination of two drugs per bottle if you're needing to take both of the medications because it means that your 
A, only needing one drop, one bottle that you need to use um, for both those medications, and B, you're having less preservative because you're only putting in one drop rather than two drops. All glaucoma medication, pretty much all glaucoma medication, has preservatives in it. And the preservatives can cause irritation to the surface of the eye if you put them in often enough and long enough. So we encourage you to use, if you're having dry eye symptoms, we encourage you to use preservative-free lubricating drops to rehydrate the surface of your eyes several times per day. I often have patients, glaucoma patients, coming in and telling me that they are having problems with dry eyes and that they need, um, that they're using lubricating drops, but the lubricating drops aren't working. And when we actually ask our patients how often they're using the lubricating drops, they will often say that they're using just one drop in the morning. In fact, if you have dry eyes, it's really important to use the lubricating drops on a regular basis. And I would recommend at least three times a day. And in fact, if you have preservative-free lubricating drops, you can use them as often as you need, even every you know, five minutes if you really wanted to. Though there would be, we'd, we'd look at other treatment if you were having to use them five minutes all the time every day. So preservative-free lubricating drops can be very helpful and beneficial at treating the symptoms of dry eye. Taking omega-3 oil orally, um, fish oil, flaxseed oil, krill oil, any of these are high in omega-3s. And if you take them by mouth, they can really help after a couple of weeks of, of constant uh, dosage to help with um, uh, dry eye. The other, uh, the final thing that can be very helpful in treating dry eye and glaucoma patients is using a heat pack. So a wheaty bag or something similar over your closed eyelids once a day. What that does is it helps the oil glands in the eyelids to work better and this um, uh, encourages the oil, more oil onto the surface of the eye which helps to stop the watery part of the tear film from drying out and evaporating. Preservative free glaucoma drops can be very helpful but um, uh, in terms of reducing ocular side effects, the, the um, side effects that people get such as dry eye, irritation, redness and some people in, um, do actually have an allergy to the preservative in the bottles of drops. The downside to this is that very few of them are available in New Zealand and unfortunately they're not funded by Pharmac. Many of us glaucoma specialists have lobbied Pharmac regarding this and um, we are, uh, in all cases that I've had the opportunity to do this on behalf of my patients, have been um, left with a, with a negative response, unfortunately. So the drops that are available, um, preservative-free, um, easily available, are Lumigan preservative-free. It is possible, I believe, to get Timolol preservative-free. There are some other preservatives other than the standard preservative, in, which is common in most glaucoma medications. Um, and this alternative preservative has less of a, an effect on causing irritation and redness on the surface of the eye. These drops that have this are Traviprost BAK free and Alphagan P. And so, this can be helpful for patients who have a preservative allergy to the benzalkonium chloride, but again, these, these drops are not funded by Pharmac, but they are available in New Zealand. Whilst eye drops have been the mainstay of treatment for many decades in glaucoma management, they aren't, or they may not be the mainstay of treatment moving forward. And last year when I uh, presented this talk, we did briefly talk about several different medications and methods of um, delivery. And so far, none of these are yet available uh, on the market in New Zealand, but it's getting closer and closer um, to being available. One can um, inject uh, a glaucoma medication which is incorporated 
in a particular um, fatty um, uh, uh, bubble, if you like, very tiny nanoparticle bubble. It's called a nanocarrier, and then that can be injected under the skin of the eye. And that can last for up to six months. Um, there is a device that can be inserted into the eye which delivers Travaprost, um, and that can last for um, uh, months, I think, to a year, um, slowly um, delivering drug on a continuous basis. And also the Matoprost implant, um, which can be implanted into the front chamber of the eye and can slowly release its drug. So we do have um, different uh, modalities which are coming, which may uh, replace some of the glaucoma eye drops that we use at the moment, but for the foreseeable future, eye drops are the, the um, uh, most commonly used uh, way of treating glaucoma. Thank you very much for your attention.